Fundamental Science of Anime. Uh, my name is John Boise. I graduated from the University of Kansas last summer. My degree is in astronomy, which if you've never looked at what an astronomy major is, it is 90% physics major. You just swap out five physics courses for five astronomy courses and you call yourself specialized. Um, I'm telling you this not because I spent six years doing this and, and really impressed that I actually made it through it. Um, okay, I know. But the real reason I'm telling you it is because I want you to understand where I'm coming from on this panel. There's many branches to science and I don't get most of it. I don't get biology, I don't get chemistry. In astronomy, there's three elements in the universe. Hydrogen, helium, everything else. So, uh, all that chemistry stuff is like, what? Bonds? Screw that man. So, uh, most of this panel is just physics. So, that's where I'm going to be coming from. Um, also, if you come to a lot of other panels, a lot of other panels tend to be kind of a discussion where People sit up and go, um, so what do you want to like know about? And I'll pretend I'm an expert. I'm not doing that because, one, uh, there's a lot of math in this. So I can't sit here and go calculate, calculate, calculate while you ask questions because it would take a long time and it would look really stupid. So this whole panel is pretty much going to be a lecture. One of the reasons the anime works in just any kind of media in general, uh, for a film or cartoons, is based on the suspension of disbelief. And I'm not trying to ruin that for you, it's just, as a science major, it's already been kind of ruined for me. An example, my last year at KU, I was walking around on campus in the spring, and that's like the best time for college students because all the girls finally are out of like the heavy winter coats and show and leg again. And there's a girl jogging without a sports bra on. And it was just bounce, bounce, bounce. And I'm, five years ago, the first thing I would have thought was, ooh, boobs. But after doing all the physics I do, the first thing that pops into my head is, ooh, harmonic motion. <laughs> I wonder if I could figure out the spring constant. <laughs> so, um, most of the time that doesn't interfere with my life, but every once in a while it does. And these are particular instances in anime where I've been watching and suspension of disbelief has been broken for me because either I'm broken or the physics was really just that bad. So. Saying all that, uh, that's how I'm going to get started, and I'm just going to go through some instances where things were really broken, and I want you guys to understand some good science. Uh, because it's a Sunday morning, I think we're probably all kind of a little bit asleep. I designed a little bit of audience participation. Every once in a while, I'm going to say, is that plausible? And you should all scream, hell no, what sort of idiot thought that up? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the first thing is a warning. This panel contains algebra, calculus, graphs, scientific notation, technical language, and chemical formula. If you can't deal with that, we'll take a nap. Uh, I'll go through it, and then I'll get to the punchline at the end. So I'll explain what it means, or at least what you need to know to understand the point I'm making. So the first topic I'm covering is a little bit about gravity and falling. Um, I've got some videos in here that will hopefully demonstrate some of the things that don't work. It should have sound, but in case you can't realize this, this oh, is oh. the end of Final Fantasy VII Advent Children movie where they're on the top of this building and shit starts falling and they jump and they're going to be falling with it and bouncing off of it like freaking crazy. And I'm going to try to explain why this doesn't work. <laughs> so I made this video a lot longer than I needed to because it's Seshomaru, or not Seshomaru, I possibly. Sephiroth, the other really sexy S guy. <laughs> so they're bouncing, and there's parts right about there. They're standing on the blocks like there's gravity. <laughs> there is gravity, and that's why they're falling. <laughs> but they're falling with it. So there should not be any force holding them together, and I'll explain why in just a second. How the hell you chop something that big in half, man? <laughs> All right, so that's the end of the clip. Um, that was really kind of distracting because there's all the fancy, ooh, swords and Sephiroth. Wow, okay, distracting. <laughs> so I made uh, my own little animated version to kind of illustrate the principle without all the distraction. I mean, I work freaking hard on this. <laughs> really, if you guys know the numbers of any animation studios, hook me up because this is like the best animation you'll ever freaking see. <laughs> so one day, Bowser kidnaps Luigi. Mario rushes on the scene, but Bowser flies off from the sky. Fortunately, bars fall from the sky, Mario hops up them and saves the day. Yay, Yay Mario! Yay. Uh, scary best part. animation ever. 
service link, LOL. All right, so why this doesn't work? The idea is we start off with any object in free fall is going to have two forces acting on it. There's a downward force, which is the force of gravity. Any force can be described as the mass times the acceleration. Acceleration, when you're falling, the thing pulling on you is gravity. So in the first line of my equation, I'm replacing the A with the G. So we have a negative mg, we're calling it negative because we're defining down as negative, up as positive. There's also some magical resistive force, kmv, where k is some constant having to do with the density of the air or the fluid that's falling through. And since it will also depend on how fast it's moving, I tossed a v in there, and that's where you get the full first half of the first line. So the force overall acting on it is negative mg minus kmv. And for those of you that know calculus, is that next little part where Acceleration is defined as the derivative of the velocity, so m dv dt. And that last little thing is just a definition, which you don't really need to worry about. It just explains why I chose negative. So in the next line, I just factored out the m, and then I just left the rest the same. And then we integrate both sides, and then you get this line. Next, we just uh, bring the k over to the other side, exponentiate it to get that, and finally we have the last thing. See? Calculus at 11 in the morning on Sunday really isn't that bad, especially when you just do this. <laughs> it's important to do this. Cannot, it's always smile and nod and not non-smile because you look really stupid going. <laughs> so anyway, the final equation is something funny like this. For those of you that aren't really familiar with equations, let me explain what this is saying. We have some number that's being multiplied by some exponent with a constant over here and another constant over here. T is our variable on this side and this is the other variable we're worrying about. As T gets really big, this term right here is going to get bigger than this term, and then this one will basically be ignored. So what we'll really have is just this term, but also since t is going to get really, really large, this term being negative is going to go to zero, which means this whole thing goes to zero, which means the only thing left really is this g over k. And what that means is as time gets really big, our curve is not going to be anything fancy. It's just going to start off doing something big like this, an exponent, and then it's just going to level off. This is what terminal velocity is all about. If you've ever seen people like skydiving, they don't just continue accelerating and accelerating forever. They eventually slow down and they're going to get to a constant speed. The other really important thing to notice about this is that the m in this line, they cancel out because it's on both sides of the equation. From here on out, there's no mass dependency. In other words, whether you're Sephiroth, Cloud, or those giant freaking blocks of cement, you're falling the exact same way. So this curve describes the falling for everything that we just watched. That means that if those blocks started falling first, you're never going to catch up to it because your curve is going to be under it. It will never catch up. So here's what would really happen in my make-believe anime. Bowser kidnaps Luigi. Mario rushes on the scene to save the day. Bowser flies off into the sky. Fortunately, blocks start falling from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Dinosaur flying on a cloud. <laughs> Not screwed over gravity for you. 